got to play Alma Mater. So Alma Mater. Alma Mater. Whatever. Anyway, uh, Alma is cool. What are we, what what do we want people to do Chaos out there scene. in uh, TV land or not TV land, but uh, YouTube land? What do we want them to do when they watch our videos? Hit the subscribe button. You said it. You said it right. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, so we'll be reviewing this game. Alma Tell Mater. me more about Alma it. Alma Mater. You know what? So Alma Mater came out in 2020, so it's still a relatively new game. The board game geek rating is 7.6. Quite a few designers, and my uh, obligatory apologies for mispronouncing all of these names. Um, Akitaka, or something to that effect. Flaminia Brasini, Virginio uh, Jiggly, Stefano Luperto, and Antonio Tinto. Art is by Chris Williams, published by Eggert Spiel. MSRP, a little pricey, but you get a lot of stuff, as you'll find out, cool stuff. $69.99. I don't think that's bad for this game. I don't think so. All right, so let's move forward to quality of pieces. My favorite part of the game are the, the books. books. Yep. <laughs> the books right. are Hands amazing. Yep. I just wish they had come in purple. I wish they would have put little things on the front, like in the like the uh, uh, Newton, where they yeah. the math with the pie. And stuff. Or, or if they really wanted to do that one, little set, little black lines and separate pages. I mean, you can well, kind of that, see the No, pages, that, that might but, have been too much. But, no, I don't think so. But anyway, no, but they're still awesome. They're, mm -hmm. they're still amazing. Um, you do have uh, people shaped meeples, um, as well as some other wooden tokens. Um, the cardboard player boards are really nice because yeah, they, they are inlay. Layer. They are inlay. Which is I mean, nice. the only, the card quality is the only thing that I mean. It's yeah, they're glossy, very smooth. Um, you don't shuffle them a whole lot, though, so I just don't... Just at the setup. I, just a very setup, but I still think that they'll last uh, quite a while. I don't think yeah, you have to worry about that. And it's really, it's only the setup cards themselves you right. really shuffle significantly. Yeah. But the cardboard quality, I think, is pretty good. It's good, thick cardboard. Yeah, I, everything is really good about this game. I'm going to give this one solid eight. What do you guys think? I'm an eight and a half. Yeah. I, I like the books. I like the cardboard. And I'm always a fan of double layered. Yeah, I, I'm going to so have on this one as well. I, I, I think they've done a really nice. Uh, the books are amazing. I mean, yeah. the books are so amazing. I just I just gave it half a point off because it's not purple. <laughs> Mama, <yeah. laughs> All right. So moving on to theme. I think the theme carries over well. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're so at too. a university. You're trying to hire professors to teach your students, which give you special abilities. You're trying to attract really cool students that also give you different abilities. Um, and you're trying to manage your books, which are your knowledge and money. Money is very hard to come by, just like with any research. Um, so I thought that was actually really interesting. And, and money's tight visiting. in school, too. So yeah. it kind of makes sense. Yeah, that's so. what I'm saying. It's just money's tight all around. I think the theme carries over very well. I think well. so. I, I think mm -hmm. it pushes the mechanics very well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do think, especially when you use the terminology of the game, oh, you hired a professor, or oh, you used your students. I yeah, think that they helps. give lectures and yeah, mm -hmm. so that kind of thing really helps um, entrench you in the theme, and mm -hmm. I think this was very successful in doing that. Uh, what would you give this score wise? I'm thinking probably a nine on this. I mean, it doesn't. There's no backstory per se, but as far as just the integration of how everything fits into the school, plus you know, just it it's, it still manages to be an interesting, varied, yeah. different types of actions you can do even with it. I, I really enjoy the, the theme on this. I, I'm, I'm sticking with an eye. I think it's a, a good solid. What about you? I'm going to go a little bit be one better. I'm going to go nine and a half just because we haven't really talked about it, but the art's really nice, in yeah. my opinion. Um, the art on the cards is really nice. It's varied because you've got all these different professors and all these different starting cards. Uh, the tiles, uh, there's a bunch of tiles, all different artwork. Really cannot complain a whole lot about this game. Yeah, uh, it's a nine and a half. Well, the student, the only, the only consistent, it, it, the students like within one school are all the same picture. Right, but there's still a, yeah a lot of variety yeah. there. Yeah, um, I am actually going to give this an eight point five in theme. Um, I I do think it's great, and I do think it pushes the mechanisms. I'm just not sure it's a level nine. Um, and and, and for me, and I think it's just because. You know, there wasn't any storyline to it. You, you Didn't know. need it, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I don't know why we're building a school. Well, it does have a little story. It says, it's the dawn of the new age of Europe. During the early 15th century, universities are being established to challenge the influence of religion on academic studies. 
Little did the founders of these institutions know that this would ignite academic pursuits that would bring about a cultural revolution. In the early Renaissance, players will serve as blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know you could uh, serve that, as blah, That's blah, what blah, the story blah, blah, is. But... So it's got one paragraph. You got one paragraph. Yeah. Yeah. Again. So, um, okay. Right. So let's move on to rules. So how were the rules, Randy? Uh, they're okay. There's the, the big thing is that there's a lot of iconography. They explain all the cards and everything in detail, but that means you have to look through the yeah. book to find it. You're going to need, especially the first few plays, to keep this book very close by and be referencing it a lot. Uh, the iconography isn't real clear, and there is no cheat sheet for it. There's, it's just in the book. Um, in the book, there is. I mean, there's icons in here. At the, there's the costs, icons, bonuses, and so on. Easy to find. It's all at the back, but then all the card references. But it's just... You have to sift through it a lot to get to it. And it's easy to overlook something. It just, there's a lot going on in this game. So it's easy to, to mix up stuff. I mean, and when we're going through it, it does flow through and have like the scoring on the board, which is nice. It has the round turn order at the bottom, if you can interpret it. But even that's pretty cryptic. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm going to give it a seven, I think. It's, it's, it's okay, but it's not great. Right. I've not. I'm going to agree. I've not read the rule book. I do own it as well, but it's every time I played it was with you guys. So. Yeah, and, and every time we've had to reference the, the yeah, rule book I haven't a lot. played it on my own. Yeah. And there's no cheat sheet. Yeah. Not that I don't know if you can make a cheat sheet efficiently well enough to be able to serve this game mm -hmm. adequately because of all the iconography. But yeah, yeah. All right. So let's move forward to actual gameplay. So. Um, it is a worker placement game in the sense, um, and so let's kind of cover that. So you have your own personal board that you have your own library in which people can um, rent out your books or buy your books. I'm not really sure what. Well, they're that... paying coins, so they're buying at the bookstore. It's yeah, okay. Well, you know, it could be a weird library. Anyway, so it could be a situation. <laughs> it could be a library where you buy books. So yeah. weird. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, well, you know, it could be late fees. Who knows? Okay. Um, <laughs> you pay them in advance. I know I'm going to be late returning this book. <laughs> so I'm going to go and pay, spot you $4. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that's why the cost is differentiating. <laughs> yeah, I was only going to be a little late up here, but I'm like super late back here. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a bookstore. <laughs> um, it's just that it looks like library. Anyway, it's shelves. It's anyway, books bookstores have shelves too. All right. So anyway, so you have your workers, and there's a lot of different actions. We're gonna go over basic, uh, just a few of them. You do end up with uh, actions that you can play through your different students. Most of those times, those are buying your own um, colored books. You also have the option to gather students, which cost you books. Um, and then you also have um, hiring a professor as an option, and those require books as well. Um, and then there's actually the acqu acquiring books, and there's several different things. Like I said, sometimes you get them players on your player board, but there's also actions um, in this section of the board that allows you to get money or allow you to buy books from other people's bookstores or from um, these actions up here. Um, also, there are three different events that you're, or three different achievements that you're trying to achieve at your university, which gives you special abilities. Um, everyone starts out with their own special ability, but then these three um, you can add over the course of the game through getting these achievements. Um, so the other piece of it is that you have this prestige um, track here, which is um, you can, if there's a gear action, then that's what you go up. And then the higher you are on the achieve track, your books are worth more because yeah so um and that you use those higher rank books in different applications um, particularly to gain students particularly to gain students um so that's kind of the very general broad because this is i would very a medium to heavy game um because i think there's a lot of strategy to it game. there's a lot going on i think it's more medium than heavy but it's definitely right there in between the two um so with that being said, what was your favorite part? Well, I want to make sure that everybody understands. I think that 
although there's a lot of mechanics, they integrate with each other really well. Mm -hmm. You have to get books. You got to get books to get students. You need students to be able to get books, and you got to get books and students to get professors. I mean, it all works. <laughs> and you so, need money to do it all. <laughs> you got to work so well together. And yeah. the other thing that I think is very important to me to point out. This game deserves multiple playthroughs because you learn it one way. There's other ways to try and play the game. And I think that playing it just one time is not going to give you the full impact that this game can give you. Yeah. There's a lot to it. So it deserves multiple gameplays. My favorite part, though, it's the components, the books, I I, the, the chunkiness of the game. I love yeah. it. I will say, so we played this uh, one time where no one sold their books. They didn't yeah, fill up their bookstores. Stores. Yeah. That was awful. It was awful because no one wanted to sell their books because no one wanted to have people advance. That game was by no stretch. And so finally... It was boring. It was boring. Mm -hmm. Well, I finally think I took the hit for the team and just filled up my store and was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to lose and that's fine because I just got to get this game going. Like, this game's got to move forward. Um... But I do notice that there is a strategy as long as you keep putting books forward. Like, I had way more money than you guys did, but that's because I kept my bookstore fully stocked. And so I didn't have nearly the money troubles that you guys did. I didn't really have money problems. Oh, I completely forgot about the fact that you got income from the books. And that cost me, I think, the entire game I was lagging behind on yeah. money because of that first round for getting that. So I could have stocked my books towards the end of that round, but didn't. And as a result, I ended up suffering for the entire game. Yeah, well, your books were needed and you weren't any to buy. It was very annoying. Um, so I, I do want to put that caveat in there. If you got, you know, some people that you play with, they're vicious and they're, they it, would it, rather it, harm everybody than, you know... It, they might be able to figure out a strategy where they can eke out enough points to win by a, possibly eliminating other people from getting your books, and they just eke out enough to get that win. But it's it, so it, awful. It, it would be. It would not. That would not be a fun game. Yeah. And so that, that one we played, it was boring. I didn't hate it. It was just boring. Yeah, because you couldn't, couldn't do, do anything. Well, yeah, you yeah. had to go over here and you'd use like three workers just to get a book of someone yeah. else's kind. It was just awful, guys. So I do want to put that with mm -hmm. that playthrough. Be careful on the strategy you use with that particular element because it really stalls out the game and it's very, very boring. Um, what so. was your favorite part? Randy? Oh, you're asking me. I thought he was asking you. Well, I was. That's uh, okay. Yeah. We'll talk to either one of you. All right. <laughs> I, well, first of all, I, I always like a game that gives you open, a different starting resources and yeah. the fact that it had drafting. You know, that, that's just like and the terraforming Mars and the prelude. I enjoy yeah. that whole aspect of it. So I like that. Uh, obviously, I like getting students because I always, every time I've ever played, I've always tried capitalizing and maximizing my students. It hasn't paid off yet. Because I feel like the professors, that's my one grievance with the game, it feels like the professors are more weighted than the students are in the game. But they're more expensive. Well, I agree. They are. But once you get one, you kind of start dominating against the other people. And that is, it's to but me, it's a little is, more But the thing is, but you powerful. never went and got any of them. I mean, how I, many... I like... never had enough books to get around. I didn't have the money to buy other people's books. Because you spent the books on the students. No, well, that was part of it. As yeah. far as, that was part of it when I got my books. But... I needed other people's books, and I always only had two people's books, or yellow and two people's books. And yellow is wild, well, not wild. They call it it's dictionaries, and you can't treat them as books. Now, I will say there is a caveat to this. Uh, I don't think that we paid attention to you, and this is the part that I actually really, really like. You can build an economy system for your books. You want your books over on the professor side. And that is something I did mm -hmm. this game was like, mm -hmm. I'm making sure my books are out there because that means they're cheap, and then that means people are going to use them, which means they're going to need more because as they get built in the professor section, people, if they're wanting more professors, are going to have to buy my books. And then at the end, I was able to build mine up to level one. Right, and that's part of that integration, that everything connects so well. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and that is actually my favorite part, mm -hmm. is that economic, you can drive up demand for your books throughout the whole entire game and really see a profitability on that and that's the thing is, so it may not be in your best interest to hold your books right. like hostage because then there's going to be no demand because people are going to avoid doing that. Now, when everyone does it, that's lame. But like, you know, 
So that, I thought that was actually my favorite part is that e- that secret economic. Yeah. All right, how do I make sure my books have the highest demand? So, all right. Well, thank you guys so much. Oh wait, we're we didn't give a final score. We didn't give a final score. Give it a final score. Go. I'm gonna probably give this uh, probably an eight point five. It, it, you know, it, it, I don't like the fact that it can stall. You know, I don't like that, but. Given the fact that you know that doesn't typically happen, and it's only happened the one time, I'm not going to penalize it too heavily. But I probably would have given it a nine otherwise. Yeah, I think eight and a half is a good score. It's a good solid game. Um, little, it can be a little bit of take that a little bit br- uh, brutal to it, which is what I don't like in some games. So just a little bit of negative side to that, but I do enjoy it. Yeah, it. Um, I think this is fantastic. I I like the fact that there is that hidden strategy of the e- economy. I like how. You know, there's a lot of cool things going on here. Um, I'm I'm fine with an 8.5. I think that's mm-hmm. pretty solid. So, all right. Well, now we can say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Again, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Um, we would love to see you guys again. And don't forget to comment below what you would like to see us play or would like us to review. We're down for anything. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye.